everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care video series. Uh, today, I thought I would cover the topic of vibe coding. It's probably a term that you've heard from either your team or the news or some other source, but you may not have seen what it actually looks like. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll explain it a little bit. We'll go to my computer. You can see an example where I'll vibe code uh, for a couple minutes, uh, and then we'll sort of wrap up and talk about what it might mean uh, for you. So I'm going to uh, actually talk about two closely related terms. One is vibe coding, and the other is Gen AI assisted coding. And uh, technically, the, um, the term vibe coding is really like you're just letting Gen AI write the code for you. You're not even reviewing the code. You're just letting it do its magic. Um, and, uh, and you're just going with the vibes. And I'll read you the original kind of definition of this. This was the original post from Andre Karpathy, who's one of the founders of OpenAI, uh, who coined the term vibe coding. And he said, there's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding, where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. It's possible because the LLMs are getting too good. But in the end, it says, I just see stuff, say stuff, run stuff, copy and paste stuff, and it mostly works. So this is a coding style that is relevant for, at least for today, relevant for kind of weekend projects, you know, things that aren't too serious. Um, you could think of Gen AI assisted coding as the more professional term um, for more important projects or things like our company where we're doing important work and software for resale and that kind of thing where you still want your developers to really know and understand the code and approve everything and make sure it's exactly what we want. But you use Gen AI to be more productive, to help do things faster, maybe find some bugs, do kind of a Gen AI code review while you're coding, you know, this kind of thing where Gen AI can be a helping hand uh, to the process, but it's not taking over the whole, uh, the whole process. So there's kind of two variants of the term depending on how wild you want to be on the, on the concept. Uh, but let me explain what it looks like to, um, uh, to somebody doing this, uh, and, then, uh, and then I'll show you actually what it, what, uh, what it looks like. So a developer works in a software application called an Integrated Development Environment, or an IDE. It's a little bit like a finance person is in Excel all day. Uh, I don't know, salesperson's in PowerPoint. Um, it's basically the, the software that, uh, that a developer uses. So it usually looks like this. It has two panes. Um, and on the left, you have the folders and files. Now, when you're in, I don't know, marketing and Word or sales and PowerPoint, you're usually just dealing with one document, one big document. But in... Um, Writing a software system, you have thousand like little files, uh, and the whole system is this collection of files. So that's why you always have this pane. Uh, and then when you click on a click on one of these files, it opens up in a tab. It's like a browser tab. So this will be all the code for that file. And then when you click on another file, it'll open another tab, and this code will replace with the other um, the the code with that file. Uh, and so this is basically what integrated development environments look like and the workflow looks like for a developer. So when you're vibe coding or when you're using Gen AI to assist with your coding, there's actually a third pane uh, that you use. So let me walk over to the other side here. So this is basically your Gen AI pane, okay? And basically in here is where you're interacting with Gen AI. So you might type in a prompt like, hey, I'm new to this project. Can you ex please explain it to me? And then Gen A, so you type it here, and then Gen AI will basically explain what's going on in this project, what it's seeing in terms of the files, what the application does. And then you might say, hey, I want to improve this application. I want to add this new screen or this new feature or stuff like that. Can you go off and do it? And basically, you'll type that in, and then this will all scroll up. Uh, and then the Gen AI system will start to edit your code, um, test out different ways to do it, um, and basically write the feature for you by editing your files directly. Um, and depending on your 
uh, settings. It might ask you to approve each edit, or there might be certain kinds of things that you allow it to auto approve. But it's kind of a interaction style, uh, generally, with this third pane. Okay. So going back here for a sec. So you can think of vibe coding, true vibe coding, as um, you basically move this pane to the left and you ignore all the code. You're just interacting with the Gen AI systems. You're having it enhance the product or fix the bugs or do whatever. Uh, and you're sort of ignoring the code and just letting it work. Uh, and again, I think this is good for certain kinds, certain kinds of software, you know, little things that might be hobby projects or personal projects, that, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and then for Gen AI assisted coding, you probably have these three panes. You're, you're observing more of what's going on. You're making sure it kind of fits into the architecture and your standards and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, so that's the basic idea. Uh, and that's basically what it looks like. Now let's uh, head over to my PC and I'll show you a small example for a couple. I'll do a couple minutes of vibe coding so you can see what that looks like. Uh, and then we'll uh, come back to the board to summarize. Okay, so uh, I have a very small application that I used when I would find, I'm a runner, and when I find myself in an international hotel having to run on a treadmill, I realize that um, everything's in metrics. So the number of kilometers, the pace in kilometers, and I need to somehow automatically convert. So I wrote this really little application a long time ago to do that. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is a mobile app, it runs on my phone, so I'll run it real small here. So I can type in, hey, I wanna run uh, nine minute 30, 9.30 miles for five miles, um, and it'll tell me, okay, on the treadmill, you should set the pace to 10.2 kilometers per hour, and you should run that for eight kilometers, basically. Um, and then slightly advanced features, if within that five miles I have to run three one mile intervals at a faster pace, like eight minute miles, then it'll tell me exactly what, what to do. So it's kind of a simple application, uh, but I've used it dozens of times over, over the years. So what I wanna do for this application is I want to, for some reason I want a dark mode uh, version of the application. And so I'm gonna do this with Vibe Coding and we'll see if it works. So here's the integrated development environment that I talked about. It's a web app, so you have an index HTML page, you have a, a bunch of code um, that does the application, uh, and then you have some styles um, that make it look, uh, look like it does. So with Vibe Coding, I'm gonna set up this third pane, um, and you can see it over here. Uh, and I'm gonna say, I wrote this code a while ago, and I forget um, how it works. Can you give me an overview of this project? Okay, this is a typical first question, uh, basically, which is, please explain the project that I'm in. Okay, so the Gen AI system, basically, um, and there's a lot of these different coding uh, systems, uh, but the Gen AI system is kind of reading through the project, uh, exploring some of the key files, uh, maybe reading everything in this case, um, and, uh, and basically you can explain what, uh, what it sees. So let's see how it does. Hey there, I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. All right, so uh, web-based running calculator converts US to metric stuff. Pace conversion, intervals, um, the front end, how it works, mobile first, key files. Okay, so I would like to implement a dark mode for this, this application. And you come up with a plan to do that, okay? It is typical when you do this kind of uh, coding to ask it to build a plan first and then go execute the plan because you might have edits um, that you want to make uh, with the plan. So um, 
So it is now coming up with a plan. Analyzing the current structure, uh, designing a color palette for the dark mode. Um, so you can see here's a case where it's asking me, would you like to proceed? Okay, so here's the implementation plan. Add a, um, a team, uh, theme switching logic. Uh, so there must be some button and then some way to remember the button uh, choice for me. Um, and convert the colors, switch between the different themes, blah, blah, blah. Smooth transitions, so maybe it has some transition stuff. So I'm going to say yes, auto accept edits. So now what it's doing is it's going to implement this basically. Um, and uh, like I said, you can kind of uh, look at the code uh, as it's doing it. Um, it, it will show the code here as well, so you can look at the resulting files here, or this particular tool will show you the differences. So I'm adding a button here, a theme toggle button, basically, um, and here I am editing the styles, the style sheet, uh, so that you have this additional theme, uh, basically called dark. Uh, Okay, creating some variables, CSS variables for theme switching. Uh, implementing the logic in JavaScript. So essentially when I hit the button, it switches the theme. Um, the next step is theme persistence in local storage, meaning uh, if I've switched to dark mode, the next time I use the app, it'll come in in dark mode uh, or vice versa. So it remembers my last choice. Um, let's see. Oh, now it wants to open it up and test it. Okay, so it has launched the app. And let me go back there, see what it's doing. Okay, it's prob okay, so it has tested in some way. Uh, so here's what I've done. I've added this button, I've added the switching logic, I've added preferences, I've implemented smooth transitions. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, let's start with the light mode. Okay, so you can see what it's done is add a button on top. It's a moon and a sun. So I'm going to click on the sun. Uh, sorry, click on the moon, and it turns into dark mode. Let me just make sure it roughly works. Three, one, eight. I don't run this fast anymore, but um, that's those are the paces I used to run, I think. Uh, so dark mode seems to work fine. Change it to light mode. That seems to work fine. Um, so it's kind of done, basically. Uh, so it described it, it's made the code changes over here. Uh, I can have reviewed the resulting changes, I can review the diffs in the actual uh, pane, and um, thank you, that looks great. I know it's a big waste of tokens to thank uh, the Gen AI system, but for some reason I, I always do that. Uh, you're welcome, um, and, and we're all good. So, um, so I know it's a small example, but that gives you a sense for how vibe coding kind of works. You're in this Gen AI pane, you're giving it instructions, you're watching what it's doing, you're approving certain things, and you're not like line by line in the code. Now this thing, um, because I'm not great at CSS or great at some of this stuff, would have probably taken me, I don't know, two, three hours, maybe more to sort of implement this dark mode, and you can see this has done a good job in, I don't know, whatever, five, six minutes. Okay? Great, so I hope that was uh, useful and gave you a better sense for what this actually uh, looks like. You know, this is a fast-moving area. This term, vibe coding, was coined in February of 2025, just a few uh, earlier in the year where this is being recorded. Um, and these, Gen AI is going to get better and better and better at coding. So this is going to evolve in terms of the relationship between developers and Gen AI and what we can really leverage Gen AI for. And I'll leave you with one more, um, one more quote, which I thought was really interesting. It said, there's a new coding language in town, and its name is English. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's one way to think about it. We have been moving up the stack in terms of capability of programming languages over the years, uh, and we may be adding a new layer to the stack where we can sort of speak to the computer in English 
and get what we want uh, in terms of building uh, building software. So, um, so we'll see how it uh, evolves, but it's certainly uh, one of the use cases that the Gen AI community is really focused on, and we're really making a lot of advances uh, in, and I think it's going to impact all of us um, in, uh, in a positive way. Okay, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Until next time, bye. Hey there, I hope you liked this video. Um, I've added a next video at the end of this, so um, so take a look at that if you, uh, if you enjoyed this. And if something resonated with you, please drop uh, a comment um, at, um, uh, down below here. I read every comment uh, myself, and I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.